What if every single starter in the NFL just suddenly disappeared? Well today, with the power of Madden, we're gonna try to find that out, and we are gonna see who these superstars in the NFL would be if the current starters just didn't exist. And I am gonna use the lowest overall team in these rosters, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we'll see if we can save this 64 overall team. And I put an unbelievable amount of time into making these rosters. It took me way longer than it should have, so if you enjoyed today's video, you know, be sure to drop a like. I would very much appreciate it. It really helps out the channel, and if we can hit just a thousand likes on this video, I will do something else with these rosters. I have a lot of other ideas for the full teams of backups. So if you want to see that, again, just a thousand likes. We've been doing really well with all the like goals lately. Easily destroyed the last two. And once we hit 25k on the channel, I have a very special video planned. Some that I think y'all will very, very much enjoy. And we are really close to 25k, so if you like Madden Rebuilds, be sure to subscribe, and if you know anyone else that might enjoy these type of videos, be sure to share them with them. <laughs> and if you have any fun video ideas, let me know down below, because if I pick your comment, I'll give you a shout out and all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's get into this rebuild. And super quick, I do want to go over who the best players left at each position are. I didn't do kicker and punter or fullback, because because, like, I don't even think there were enough to replace them at those positions. And a lot of the fullbacks didn't even get enough playing time to be considered starters, really. So I just didn't replace any of them. Most teams don't even use one. But the best quarterbacks currently left are Will Levis, Jacoby Brissett, and Andy Dalton. Also, Jameis Winston and Teddy Bridgewater. You know, Levis might take over for Ryan Tannehill. I, it's hard to say for some of these players. Because some players here are currently current starters, but that's only because of injury, like Will Levis, like Gardner Minshew, I guess Josh Dobbs will be. So a lot of these guys are technically current starters, but likely wouldn't be if, you know, the regular starter was healthy. There are some good running backs, though. Cordero Patterson, Kareem Hunt, Ezekiel Elliott, Devin Singletary, Elijah Mitchell, Brees Hall. Brees Hall's arguably a starter. The Jets are weird, though. They've, like, refused to play him, so I, I'm counting him as the backup, even though he probably should should be the starter there. <laughs> Receivers aren't looking great. There's Julio Jones, Sterling Shepard, LaVisca Chenault, Devin Duvernay. You know, some of these guys have upside, but it's it's not a great group there. Tight end, Hunter Henry, Will Disley, Jonu Smith, who's arguably a starter. On the O-line, there's some decent players. Nobody too crazy left there. On the D-line, the best guy I like technically counted as a backup is Brandon Graham. You know, that Eagles edge group is insane, and he definitely gets a lot less snaps than some other players there. He's an 86 overall here. There's also Emmanuel Ogba, Randy Gregory, Bryce Huff, Carl Lawson, Jerry Hughes. There are some good players there. Leonard Floyd. At defensive tackle, Jordan Davis. The Eagles The Eagles were a weird team. I didn't know who to count as backups because they rotate a lot, but it looked like Jordan Davis got the least amount of snaps out of their, like, four good defensive tackles. Same with Milton Williams. But yeah, there are definitely some really good players still still left in the league here. Just the teams as a whole definitely aren't great. I also didn't know what to do with Isaiah Rogers because he's suspended and he might be a starter if he wasn't, but he was like the fourth highest rated corner for the Eagles, so I left him because I do think he might be a backup if he wasn't suspended. So that is what the NFL is currently looking like here. Definitely some good players left, but every team in the NFL is, I guess, a 71 overall or lower. Also, ignore that... <laughs> ignore or Marlon Humphrey at left tackle and Ronnie Stanley at strong safety. That's just, that's how I did this, okay? It was the best way I could think of getting rid of the players. They'll all get cut, obviously, so we won't have to worry about that. The best team, though, I believe, is the Baltimore Ravens, which is kind of weird. I guess they do have pretty good depth. They kind of have to have good depth because they are injured all the time. So it kind of makes sense. Still kind of interesting, though. But now that we've gone over, you know, enough of the players here, Let's get into the simulation, and we will see how the NFL is looking at the midseason point. Okay, well, at the midseason point of year one, it looks like we are 3-3, three and three, which is kind of surprising, but it looks like the Bills are the best team right now, technically. The Saints are also doing really well, which makes sense. I mean, they have Jameis Winston as their backup. They have one of the better backup QBs. The Chiefs are doing well. The Seahawks are doing well. The Browns are doing well. The Cardinals are doing well. And the worst, the worst team right now, 
right now is the Chargers. That, that kind of makes sense. The 49ers are down there. The Jaguars, the Panthers, the Broncos, the Colts. Some of those bottom teams make sense, but the 49ers is a little confusing, and the Jags are a little confusing. I kind of like C.J. Beathard. I mean, he's not the worst backup. I feel like they would be decent, but the Panthers, that, <laughs> that kind of makes sense. Interesting bottom tier teams, though. Interesting top tier teams, too. But for our team, something I forgot to mention is the drafts are gonna be extremely important. I mean, they are, the players we get from the draft are gonna probably be, like, the best players at their position or close to it, especially if we get, like, a 78 overall QB or something. The drafts are gonna be crazy. And I'm actually also curious to see what every team's overall is gonna be at the end of this rebuild. I wonder if we're gonna be about, like, where we are in real life, or if they're still only gonna be, like, 78 overall max overalls or something like that. I guess we'll just have to see. So, uh, stick around to the end of this video to find out. <laughs> That's my way of getting you to watch the entire video. But for re-signings, call me crazy, I don't necessarily want to pay Greg Gaines 20 mil per year, <laughs> especially when he has one sack on the season, four tackles for loss. That's not great. Yes, yeah, something else is every player is gonna be very expensive. Like, Nick Leverett, three years, 34 mil. Oh, Justin School, three years, 41 mil. Yeah, I don't think I'm interested in that. Yeah, more than likely, this entire team is gonna be built through the draft, because I'm not paying these kind of, this kind of money to these kind of players. No offense, but yeah, like, no, we ain't doing that. So that's all for us to check here, and let's get to the end of your number one, and it's gonna be super interesting to see who wins, like, the yearly awards, who the big breakouts are. I guess we'll see. Okay, well, in year one, we, we choke big time finishing 5 and 12, which, you know, we were the worst roster in the NFL, so that's absolutely fair. We had the last scoring offense in the NFL with 13.9 points per game. I don't know why I clicked away from that, and our defense was actually really good, especially our pass D. That's interesting. But let's see who the best teams and worst teams ended up being. We're probably bottom four-ish, but the Chiefs and the Seahawks were the best team for each conference. The Browns, Falcons, Saints, Ravens, Rams, Eagles, Panthers, which is weird because they were one of the worst teams at the midseason. Lions, Bills, and Jets, and Dolphins and Colts all made the playoffs. And the worst teams were the Jags, Bengals, Buccaneers, Broncos, and Steelers. I feel like the Steelers would do pretty well. They have some decent backups. I honestly kind of feel like all these teams would do decent, but I don't know. It's, it's hard to say for sure. <laughs> Not that we would ever have to worry about about that, hopefully. But let's check out our team season stats and then we'll kind of go over who was like the top for each position. Kyle Trask was not great. I mean, if he came in in real life and had a season like this, it would be like, okay, that's a backup season, it's whatever, but he's doing this against other backups. I mean, I guess he has backups on his offense too, so I don't know, it, we're gonna look for a, a better option there. <laughs> Sean Tucker wasn't great either. 900 yards is fine, but only 3.3 yards per carry, only three touchdowns Trey Palmer, a thousand yards for him, nine touchdowns. Maybe he can get a dev trait. I mean, he's up to a 72. He could turn into a pretty good player for us, and we're not gonna have to pay him until like the very end of the rebuild. So that's a pretty good budget find there. Not much in terms of receiving though, other than him. And then blocking wasn't bad. Brandon Walton was, I guess, our worst lineman, but it was not bad. KJ Brett, KJ Brett led the team in tackles with 120 tackles for loss, 15 for Logan Hall, which you know. No, I maybe should have gotten rid of him. I got rid of William Golston instead. I don't know why I did that. Logan Hall gets a lot more snaps, but whatever. Maybe he'll turn into something good for us, and then I can feel guilty about having him here. That'll be great. But we had a lot of tackles for loss overall. And then sacks, six and a half for Logan Hall. Only five for Yaya Diaby, but I mean, I've seen worse <laughs> from actual, like, good players. I mean, I had TJ Watt get, like, six one year, so that's not bad at all. And interceptions, five for Servasia Dennis, two for a good amount of players. Josh Hayes, D. Delaney, Richard LeCount, Zion McCollum, and then one for Kayvon Merriweather. So weird to list that as like our starting secondary. I don't know how many times I've even mentioned these players' names on the channel, but yearly awards, MVP goes to Jacoby Brissett. That makes sense. I mean, I think he looked bad in the preseason for, for the commanders, but he was pretty good for the Browns last year. I mean, he was better than Deshaun Watson, arguably. Also, also up here is Stetson Bennett, Kyle Allen, Desmond Ritter, Blaine Gabbert. 
what an what an interesting list. Tyler Huntley up there, who was arguably like the MVP of the one I did with only quarterbacks retired. I don't think he ever won an MVP, but he was like the one who did consistently the best over the three years. But AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Ezekiel Elliott. NFC goes to Antonio Gibson. AFC Defensive Player of the Year goes to Leonard Floyd, which I did see he had a good amount of sacks. We'll just say that. Defensive Player of the Year for the NFC goes to Isaac Yadam, who looked really good when he came in for the Saints. And then AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Rasheed Rice. Defensive Rookie of the Year for the AFC goes to Dan Henley. Kind of surprised it's not Dylan Horton. We'll see why in a second. And then NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Stetson Bennett, which is good for the Rams. And Defensive Rookie of the Year does go to Servasia Dennis. So I'm going to have to try to pronounce his first name for the rest of the rebuild. That's fun. But no, I, I thought he was a really good prospect. So it, it makes sense to me here. Diaby also up there at number three. We got some interesting names on this defense, <laughs> to say the least. But now we'll quickly go through some of the top players at each position. So for QB, Kyle Allen had the most yards with 4,150. I think he also, no, Desmond Ritter had the most touchdowns with 34, but not as many yards. And then Jacoby Brissett was obviously MVP for good reason. He did pretty well. Stetson Bennett, only three picks too. I wonder who the worst performers were though. <laughs> Joe Flacco was terrible. The Jags picked him up. He threw seven touchdowns and 14 picks. Trubisky wasn't great. Mariota wasn't great. Alex Magoo was awful. I feel like this is backwards. I feel like some of those dudes would do all right. Malik Willis must have gotten traded to the Raiders. He didn't do very well. AJ McCarron was bad. Sam Darnold didn't do super well. I feel like he would probably do about as well as Brock Purdy's doing because it's just absurdly QB friendly over there, but I don't know. <laughs> Interesting list. Not what I expected at all. And Ezekiel Elliott was the league leader for rushing yards. Also had Kareem Hunt, Devin Singletary, Cordero Patterson, Zach Charbonnet as a rookie, Brees Hall, AJ Dillon, Chuba Hubbard. This list kind of makes sense for sure. I don't know about the top two exactly. They're a little bit old and washed a little, but hey, you never know. The, <laughs> the league leader in receiving yards was KJ Hamler. Is his picture like really pixelated or am I crazy? I don't know. But almost 1,300 yards, Ola B.C. Johnson on the Rams with over 1,200 yards, Deontay Hardy with 1,200 yards, Rasheed Rice too, Trey, Con Trey Quan Smith back on the Saints with almost 1,200 yards. Interesting numbers here. Not many 1,000-yard receivers. I mean, a few, but not many. Dan Henley apparently led the NFL in tackles with 143, even though the numbers are kind of weird sometimes, and it doesn't actually show all the players, but it looks like it did here. Tackles for loss. <laughs> the most was Miles Murphy with 23, but he also had only one sack, so that's that's a little confusing, but all right. And sacks, the most in the NFL was Leonard Floyd with 20 and a half. 15 and a half for Emmanuel Ogba. I am scarred from seeing his name from, I guess, a couple rebuilds ago. Y'all will know why if you saw that one. Josh Uche with 15, Lorenzo Carter with 12. Interesting numbers here. Kyler Fackrell. But here's why I thought Dylan Horton would win Defensive Rookie of the Year. I mean, he was pretty good. 16 tackles for loss, 11 sacks, 64 tackles. I guess not though. Tyree Wilson was also pretty good. And then interceptions, eight for Isaac Yadam, led the NFL, seven for Josiah Scott. That's interesting. Just very interesting numbers here overall. I feel like there are definitely better backups than some of these performers, but I don't know. Also, I can't wait for people to fucking be like, oh, why is Leonard Floyd here? I'm going to count Von Miller as the backup over, or the starter over Leonard Floyd, because I don't want Von Miller getting 40 sacks in a season. I just don't want to see that. I'm not counting him as the backup there, even though I think he technically is li listed as the backup. I, I don't want that. <laughs> but now that we've seen all the stats and everything, let's see who wins the Super Bowl here. But here in the Super Bowl, the Jets take down the Seahawks 26 to 20. You know, that definitely pains me as a Seahawks fan, but it is what it is. So, I mean, at least this is the rare time where one of the one seeds makes the Super Bowl in Madden. But wait, what did the Ravens do? They were the highest overall team. I didn't notice them up there for, I guess, one of the bad teams or the good teams. Oh, just kidding. They went 12 and 5. Okay, that's that's fair, I guess. Also, a Drew Locke, Zach Wilson Super Bowl is, is something. <laughs> that's the definition of elite right there. But hey, if every starting QB didn't exist, they would probably be like top 10 to 15-ish. I don't know. Somewhere around there. <laughs> but we have some players to re-sign, and to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna re-sign anybody here. If we suck this upcoming 
year, that's fine. I just don't want to pay these players this amount of money. And there isn't really anyone here who was like amazing for us necessarily. I mean, there's some guys who did well, but I it would be so much better to just draft players than overpay those players. So that's the strategy, and I think that'll work out pretty well. I shouldn't have said that. Now we're gonna suck for the rest of the rebuild, but I guess we'll just see. Now free agency's interesting because there are guys like Sam Darnold asking like 45 million a year. Oh god. <laughs> These dudes are all gonna be like obsolete by the end of the season because of all the rookies. Like it's not it's not smart to pay any of these players. I will say the one position where we maybe should sign somebody is running back. I don't know if I necessarily want any of these guys, but it is like impossible to make a rookie running back good. I have no idea why, and that's like the biggest mystery for me in Madden franchise. Like they have all the right traits, everything looks good about them, but I have never seen a Madden generated running back do anything in this game. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I don't want to pay Rashad Penny that much. He was decent though. Maybe we should. Eh, four yards per carry. If he had like 4.5 at least, then sure. But I, I don't know about that. Deontay Foreman could, eh, I don't know. I've, I think I've used him before and I think he was awful. So <laughs> maybe not. We'll just wait until next year to look for a good free agent running back. We could also trade for one eventually. We'll see. Running back is so like overly valuable in this game too. Like it, you can get by with a below average running back in real life, you will go 5-12 and 12 every season if you don't have a good running back in this game. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, we're not uh, we're not gonna go for anybody in free agency like I said, because even guys like, I don't know, Steven Parker is asking 7 mil a year at a 68 overall. No thanks. So with that, let's get to the draft, and we'll see how good of players we can add to this team. But now, here in the draft, we pick at number 3, of course. The Jags with the number 1 pick, they're probably gonna go with the QB? No, they don't. They go with the tackle. Who is their QB? <laughs> Did they sign someone? No, but they signed Blaine Gabbert, so he goes back to the, the team that drafted him, right? I'm pretty sure. He was solid last year. He was fine. And they didn't even pay him that much. Okay, that's a good deal for them. I understand a little bit why they didn't draft a QB, but he's, he's gonna get passed up quick, so maybe they should've. I don't know. And the Bengals also go with the tackle. Apparently, tackles are a hot commodity here, which makes sense, but but I'm not taking a tackle over a QB. We are gonna go with Marion Mathis, which is low-key a really cool name. Something interesting is, I would guess 100% of the time that Max Little is a better player. I mean, just look at those ratings. And he even has great throw power, but we know that Marion Mathis is better. He's a pure first round talent. He has elite throw power, but he only has C throw on the run, D short accuracy, doesn't have an A for any passing stats, does have at least A awareness. He doesn't look that good good, but apparently he is. Now this is one of the rare times where this might be a normal dev first round QB. We will see, and I don't want to be too pessimistic, but there's a chance. But I mean, obviously we're going to take him over Little just because he's better and they both could have normal dev, you never know. So let's go with Marion Mathis, only 22 years old, out of Boise State. I, I'm starting to know this game too well. Normal dev for him, which sucks. Now he is, the positive is he at least is going to be the day one best best quarterback in the NFL. He'll probably be like a 77? No, probably not even that high. Maybe like a 75, 75, 76, but he's gonna get passed up by other rookie QBs. Maybe not this year, but probably next year. But I guess I can't complain too much because he does look like a good player. I just wish he had a dev trait. That's all. <laughs> we could go for like another QB, but that guy's good. I mean, there is Greg Hutchins. Second to third round talent. Had a really good combine. Honestly, this dude's ratings look better than the other guy. I mean, not exactly, but it looks close. Now here, I don't know what to do here. We could go literally anything. I'm like overwhelmed by the amount of options that we have here, which honestly, in my case, isn't a good thing. I end up taking stupid picks when I have too many options. Dave Murphy looks pretty good. Does he though? I don't know. He had a, he has good strength, but I don't know. Ellen Harrington looks better. There are some decent linemen here for sure. Brenton Knight also looks pretty good. Let me just look through and I'll try to find and I guess just the best player I can possibly find. This corner looks really good. I mean, we're not gonna take him yet, but round three, we'll think about it, or four. Okay, you know what? There's a very good chance this guy is awful, and you know what? He might be. A lot of the time, a lot of the time, elite speed receivers with solid acceleration or like just not good acceleration aren't good, but this guy also skipped the comp.
combine, but he also has terrible injury. He also has good discipline, which usually paired with bad injury equals hidden dev, actually, at least from experience. This dude is so interesting. I have no idea if he's great or just terrible. I wish I had him more scouted so I could see his awareness and his spec catch and his catch in traffic. I just don't know enough about him, but he's interesting. You know what? This is the fun pick here. There is also, there was one good looking receiver, Heath Mixon, but he's slow. I mean, he looks good, but he's slow. He's probably better, honestly, but Marcus Beckham is interesting. So let's go with Marcus Beckham out of Florida State. Hidden Dev, 96 speed. I thought it would be a little more speed, but I'm glad he has hidden. He's probably going to be a 69 overall though. I don't know if that's a great pick. We'll see. See, that's what I do when I have too many options. I mean, he still could be good. I just thought his speed would be higher. And we absolutely need offensive line. So that's going to be the last pick I show here. Who's the best one? I think Brenton Knight might be the best one. Yeah, y'all have seen him. I don't need to go over him much. It's just a lineman, so it's not that interesting. He does lack discipline, though. What about his injury? B to C, so it's like, all right. This guy might not have a dev trait, but he at least has good strength, and I like that. So let's go with Brenton Knight out of Michigan. He does have hidden only 89 strength, but that's like decent enough. We'll take it. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> he looks good enough, but I'll make the rest of these picks and we'll see what we can do. Okay. Well, here is how we did in the draft. And you know, we did, we did all right. <laughs> we, we could have done better, but we did pretty well. Marion Mathis is a 76. I mean, we couldn't have taken a better QB there. It's just, you know, the dev traits unlucky. <laughs> I'm kind of curious curious what the other QBs look like. So there's Max Little. He does have hidden dev. Is a 72 overall? I, I hope it's just star, but I know it's not gonna be. Okay, it is just star, thankfully. So you know, I'll, I'm still happy with our pick over that guy, to be fair. They'll probably be close to the same overall by the end of the year. The 49ers picked a 64 overall QB. That's not ideal. The Chiefs pick Brett Stanley, a 70 overall. What's his dev trait? Okay, he has superstar. That's, that's interesting. So, you know, we did all right. Beckham is a little better than I thought he would be at a 73 overall. Looking pretty good. And then Brenton Knight is a 73, already the number seven ranked left guard in the NFL as a rookie. So that's also pretty nice. And then the rest of these picks weren't great. I did make all of these, but they're not, they're not the best, but they will start and they're not terrible. So we will take it. And you know what? We did make the right pick there. Heath Mixon is only a 72 overall with normal, so. Hey, we <laughs> we did the best we could, I guess. I don't know. I'm sure there was a higher overall somewhere down the board there. But anyways, we did all right. And let's get into year two of the rebuild. But here is a look at the team heading into year two of this chaotic rebuild, I guess. We're up to a 69 overall. So nice, but also, you know, that's not great. But once we start adding like free agents to this team and more draft picks, it should be a lot better, obviously. And hopefully Marion Mathis can get a dev trait. If not, though, he should should have some decent trade value. Also, he's only the number three ranked QB in the league. Who's higher? <laughs> I guess Will Levis and Jacoby Brissett both have the same overall, but for some reason it's ranking Mathis as the worst out of the three. That's not very nice, but let's actually check real quick. Were there any big changes for QB? Okay, Drew Locke went to the Colts. They paid him a decent amount of money. <laughs> Good Lord. Stetson Bennett got superstar dev. They're also, they also signed Carson Wentz. Oh, I guess it was just a one year. I was going to say, I thought they paid him like this kind of contract, but no, it's just a one year deal. I'm surprised he didn't want to go start somewhere. The Cardinals paid Kyle Allen. He is up to a 70 overall with star dev now. So he's decent. Still seems like a lot of money for what is just like a decent QB in this world. Gardner Minshew went to the Steelers. Josh Dobbs went to the Giants, but didn't get a big contract. That's kind of surprising. Sam Darnold, same deal. The, the Giants were smart about things. They have three solid QBs in this world and they're not paying any of them much money. So that's pretty much all that's happening with QBs. With running backs, it doesn't look like much changed. With receivers, the two best are Carl Gaines, a rookie for the Steelers with hidden dev at an 80 overall and Rasheed Rice is now an 80 overall. Not much with the tight ends. Taylor Lewan is on the Rams now. And I kept Ezra Cleveland for the Jags because he's listed as a backup for them. So I'm assuming he might 
might be, I have no idea though. <laughs> Leonard Floyd went back to the Rams, that's interesting. He's also lined up as a defensive end in a 3-4, I don't know about that, but okay. It looks like Andrew Van Ginkle signed with the Ravens, which is a good scheme fit, that's interesting. Chandler Jones signed with the Bears. Devin Bush signed with the Raiders. Isaiah Simmons to the Rams. Definitely some changes here. Desmond King back on the Titans? He wasn't a very good scheme fit there, so that's interesting. Bryce Hall went to the Rams on a big contract. So definitely some changes around the league this year. It looks like the best teams in the NFL this year are still the Ravens and the Patriots now, which is interesting. That kind of makes sense. I mean, they have Keon White up there. It looks like he's developing. And the worst team is right next to them, the Carolina Panthers at a 67. They're not doing great, but I'm sure they'll do well because as we know, overall doesn't matter in this game for whatever reason. But now let's get into year two and we will see what happens this year. And I'll see y'all at the midseason point. Okay, well, here we are at the midseason point of year number two and we are three and four, which isn't bad, but let, let, me, let me just show y'all something. <laughs> so we started three and oh, and we have lost four games since then. So that's not great. What's been the problem? It looks like once again, kind of our offense, but we're just, we have good pass yards per game. We have good rush yards per game. Well, pretty good, not great, but our scoring is 21st with 19.1 points per game. So that's not great, but hopefully things can, you know, fix themselves a little bit. We'll see. And something I didn't mention for some reason, I got, I just got distracted by checking the rest of the league is we signed a decent amount of just unsigned free agents. Like Zach Moss is our new running back. We signed a few linemen. We signed Mike Jackson and then quite a few depth players, obviously, just to fill out the roster. So we did a few things there. None of the players were like too expensive, obviously. And it's only one year deals, so who cares? But let's check out who we're gonna have to re-sign here. Of course, Zach Moss is one of the big ones and Mike Jackson is the other big one. Three years, 41 mil sounds a little crazy, but he is one of the better corners in the league here. Uh, his stats don't really represent that. Zero picks, three pass deflections. Couldn't you check like catches allowed before too? Did they just get rid of it? <laughs> like, I don't see it anymore. Maybe you couldn't, I don't know. I feel like you could though. That's interesting. But honestly, I don't know how interested in in anyone I am right here. That was a weird way to word that, but you know what I mean. I don't I don't know if I really want any of these players just because of the price, but we'll see, especially if some of these dudes play well. Well, the better they play, the more expensive they're gonna be. So that's kind of the unfortunate thing, but if they play well enough, we might have to resign them, we'll see. But this is gonna be very draft heavy, at least for now, until these players get less expensive. But now let's get to the end of year number two and we will see how the team does in the second half of the year and the rest of the league, we'll see. Okay, well in year number two, we unfortunately finish only eight and nine, but that's not bad. It's better than last year. And we didn't necessarily expect to do great, obviously. I mean, we had one of the lower overall teams in the league, but let's check out how our team did stats wise. Marion Mathis was solid. Definitely should have been better though. 3,300 yards, 24 touchdowns, nine picks. I mean, he is a rookie, but on the other hand, he is like the highest rated quarterback in the league. So I was honestly expecting a lot better than that. Zach Moss wasn't bad. 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, only 3.9 yards per carry though. And Marcus Beckham finished with 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns. Really good year from him. I have no idea. Like normally I would be 100% confident in that being awesome offensive rookie of the year, but there are going to be so many rookies starting, obviously, so I I have no idea if that's going to be good enough, but we'll see. And what's his dev trait? He didn't develop that much having a crazy season, but he developed pretty quickly. Could have superstar, but it's probably star. Yeah, it is only star dev, but that's fine. He could get it after the year. He could get superstar. We'll see. And then outside of him, I mean, we had like no receiving. We might switch to a more pass heavy playbook because we don't necessarily have have a good running back anyways. And the blocking was very good. I guess there's just no pass rush in the NFL, so I, I don't know. I feel like it would be similar to how it is, because these are also backup linemen, but whatever. And Servasia Dennis led the team with 131 tackles, tackles for loss, 16 for Hall, 15 for Diaby. And I almost cut Anthony Nelson, but he ended up leading the team with eight and a half sacks this year. I hate the lack of consistency in this game. If it was at least consistent, like if players consistently 
underperformed based on their overall or consistently like overperformed, I would be more fine with it. But sometimes guys like Anthony Nelson will get one and a half sacks or they'll get eight and a half. Like, I, I don't know. I never know what to do with players in this game. But Diaby, I guess he's consistent. He once again got five sacks. Not much outside of those two. And then interceptions, two for Dennis, Arthur, Merriweather, and Theo Jackson. And then one for a few players. But yearly awards, MVP goes to Stetson Bennett. Is he just going to become a monster here? We have my MVP for the last one of these I did, Tyler Huntley at number two. He did it on the Bengals, though. Here he is still on the Ravens. Also up there is Desmond Ritter, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, Max Little, a rookie. So we're definitely not getting... Well, no, we're NFC, so I guess that doesn't really matter. But he's up there as a rookie. Kyle Allen, Greg Hutchins. He's also AFC, so the hope is still alive. Same with Brett Stanley. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett's also up there, so... I mean, if anyone on our team is going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, it's going to be the receiver, but we'll see what happens. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Zeke. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to a... Or Defensive Player of the Year goes to a rookie, Aaron Johnson, on the Bills. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Max Little, and the Bills sweep Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year, and they get Defensive Player of the Year. They get top two for Defensive Player of the Year. Good Lord. And NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Trent Sherfield on the Rams now benefiting from playing to get with nope those words were all in the wrong order benefiting from getting to play with Stetson Bennett the MVP which is an insane sentence Marcus Beckham up there at number six okay so he I think he will be offensive rookie of the year thankfully defensive player of the year goes to Leonard Floyd again now on the Rams though I was hoping you would be a little more interesting I mean I knew Leonard Floyd is really good in this game when he gets the opportunity unless of course I sign him then he'll suck for whatever reason, but normally he's good. But Servasia Dennis at number six and Anthony Nelson at number 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Marcus Beckham, thankfully. Marion Mathis at number four. I really wish he would have done better, but whatever. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Gordon Sims for the Cardinals. No bucks. Definitely an interesting season. Based off of those awards, I wouldn't really be able to tell you who the good teams in the league are, other than, of course, the Rams and the Bills. I do see some interesting teams in there, though. But the best team in the league this year was the Commanders at 12 and 5. The Titans and Rams were also 12 and 5. And the worst team was the Chicago Bears at 2 and 15. So apparently the Tyson Bajan or Bajan, is that how his name's pronounced? I don't know. Apparently that experiment didn't work out. The Vikings were also bad. The Giants were also bad. The Cowboys and Browns were also bad. Those two are kind of surprising. But let's quickly check out some more broad stats. Okay, the best QB was definitely Stetson Bennett. 4,200 yards, 37 touchdowns, 8 picks. He was nice. Good lord. Maybe I should target him in rebuilds. I mean, he is older. Yeah, he's already 26, so it would be hard to develop him. He does have superstar dev here, though, obviously. We'll probably go to X-Factor in the offseason. But Nate Stanley, or Nate Stanley, wrong QB. Brett Stanley was also pretty good as a rookie. Jameis looks like he was pretty good. Desmond Ritter was pretty good. There were some solid performances. Mariota only threw four picks. Will Levis, 20 touchdowns, only three picks. See, that's not realistic. Tyrod's one of the best backups in the league. He threw 20 touchdowns, 22 picks. I don't know about that, but okay. PJ Walker was also pretty bad. Tyson Bajant was bad. Yeah, I don't know. Some of the QBs that do well and some of them who don't do well aren't really realistic. But Zeke, 1,500 yards for him, 1,400 for Kareem Hunt. AJ Dillon was really good. Chuba Hubbard was really good. Singletary. Zach Moss was up towards the top of the league for yards, but he was also the lowest for yards per carry out of any of these guys. So I, it does doesn't necessarily mean he did super well. He just got a ton of carries. Trent Sherfield and Jalen Tolbert both did really well. Same with Cedric Wilson, Marcus Beckham, Jamal Agnew. That's interesting. Mitchell Tinsley. Most sacks in the league went to apparently Aaron Johnson, but I don't believe it's showing me the full, the full picture here. Yeah, see, I hate when it does that. Leonard Floyd actually had 19 and that led the league, but what's the cutoff? Why does it not show Leonard Floyd here? It's not by name. His name starts with F or his last 
last name. It shouldn't be by overall. He's probably a really good overall. I don't know why he's not included here. That's so weird. But yeah, Leonard Floyd had the most sacks in the NFL. In interceptions, a few players had five. Can I trust that? Yes, okay. <laughs> trust issues with this game. I'm sure everybody that plays franchise does, though, to be fair. I don't know why I do this to myself. But now, once again, unfortunately, our season is over. But this offseason, we might look to target some free agents. We will see. But in the Super Bowl, the Raiders take down the Eagles here. Should I try out the Raiders playbook? I mean, they're always good in this game, whether they have a good roster or not. Who's their QB? They signed They signed Malik Willis. That's who it is. He wasn't all that good. <laughs> 17 touchdowns, 9 picks, but apparently good enough for them to win a Super Bowl. They also have Chase Claypool. This is certainly a team, I will say that. That's about all I can say, though. This was the Super Bowl winning team? Ugh. How? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't go with the Raiders playbook. That doesn't look good. They do well in the playoffs, though, for some reason. Should I just go with the good old-fashioned Chiefs playbook? I, I might. It's boring, it's lame, but it's effective a lot of the time. But we actually did get a few dev ups. Beckham went up to superstar like I expected. Did Zach Moss already have star or did he get star? He might not already had star. No, he did get star dev, so that's something, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna bring him back, but we might. Anthony Nelson and Yaya Diaby both got star dev. And I forgot to mention that Dennis, Hall, and Palmer all got star dev last year, I think. I don't think I mentioned that. I can't remember now, but I don't think I did. We're still only a 73 overall, which would be awful in the regular NFL, but here that's not, it's not terrible. It's also not great. It looks about average. But now let's get into the re-signing period and we'll see if we want anybody back. We might, we'll see. Depends on the price, as is the, the story of this rebuild. Everyone's expensive now. Ooh, you know, Mike Jackson's a little expensive, but that's only a one-year deal. We have almost 250 mil to work with. He was like just okay though. He wasn't great. I don't know. We'll do it. One year, sure, why not? He resigns. Zach Moss, I would want back, but he's not interested unless he takes four years, 29 mil. He resigns. Okay, cool. Robert Hainsey, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and he's not interested. I mean, he's been good, but to be fair, like every lineman is doing good here. There's zero pass rush. Anthony Nelson, I, I don't trust him because of last year, so we're not going to bring him back, even though he did get star dev. We'll just draft somebody there. Yeah, we're again, just not going to bring anybody back. I mean, there's not really a point to. We can just draft as good of players pretty much. And I mean, it's as simple as that. They'll just be cheap. Oh, he rejects us. Okay, fuck you too then. So now let's see if there's anything we want to do in free agency, because we definitely could go for like a really good running back. I mean, I know we just paid one, but we have over 200 mil to work with. We might as well do something. <laughs> if there's an actual running back here who performs well. Ooh, there is Chuba Hubbard. He somehow hasn't gotten a dev trait though, with back to back over 1200 yard seasons. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll definitely offer him a contract, but he does have a lot of teams interested. Ooh, yeah. I don't, I don't know about that, especially because we're going to be a lot more pass heavy now. There are still guys like Davis Mills asking for almost 50 mil per year. So that's, that's something. <laughs> and you know what? We do kind of need a tight end if we're going to be running the Chiefs playbook. But I mean, I, I wanted to go for Tommy Tremble, but he's expensive and the Chargers are very interested. So we can't really do that. Yeah, there just, again, isn't a lot that I necessarily want to do here. <laughs> I don't feel like spending a crazy amount of money for no reason. If we were heading into the last year of the rebuild, then for sure, we might as well, but we're not. So we'll wait unless, hold on, I might have a strategy here. Okay, here's what we're doing in free agency. It's less than I thought we would be doing, but these are all one-year deals right here. My plan was to like submit one-year deals for like players I think could be good that don't have any offers already and there weren't as many as I thought there would be that will actually help out the team. But we're going to go for Colby Parkinson, which we might even draft a tight end. We'll see. But Chandler Jones, he was up there for defensive player of the year one year. I'm pretty sure he did pretty well. Is only a 72 overall, but as y'all know, overall doesn't matter in this game. And then just a, I guess, potential backup lineman in Larry Cook. He could end up starting, but hopefully not at a 69 
overall. We'll see though. But let's see if any of these players want to sign. So we get Parkinson and Cook. Chandler Jones doesn't sign yet, but now he does. So we get all three of those players. Not, not massive additions, but to be fair, those guys' ratings aren't too bad compared to the rest of the players at their position in the league. But now let's get to the draft. But here in the draft, the Bears have the number one pick, of course. It looks like they signed Mike Hughes in free agency, so that's, I guess that's good for them. Probably one of the best corners in the league right now, which is crazy. It also looks like they have a X-Factor defensive end. Isn't exactly a scheme fit unless they transition to a 3-4, but he's there, I guess. <laughs> but at number one, they do go with the projected number one pick in Pat Thomas, but he was only a first to second round talent. I mean, there's a better guy right here in Dwayne Sanders. He's a pure first round talent. I mean, he, I guess he could be the same overall, but still. I don't know about that pick for the Bears, but maybe maybe Pat Thomas is a monster. I don't know. But at number 15, what do we want to do here? All three QBs are still available. These are the only three that were here. And for some reason, no team has drafted one despite like every team in the league needing a QB. I mean, I guess teams have other needs too, but still, that's weird. Oh God, this guy looks terrible. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take him. I do kind of want a tight end, but none of them look that good. Uh, Lance Hoffman looks okay. I mean, definitely not worth taking yet, but maybe in the second round. And then Kendall Griffin looks pretty all right, actually. He looks pretty good. We'll probably go with him later. But who do I want to go with here? Kareem Street looks pretty good at defensive tackle. Ooh, same with Eric Posey. What? 41 bench reps with 483 speed, 476 at his pro day. Uh, he has no pass rush though, but he looks insane. There are really good defensive tackles. I wish we needed defensive tackle more. Same with Jaden Kidd. There isn't anyone that looks too crazy though. I think we might trade down a little bit. We'll see. We could definitely use a safety, maybe a pass rusher. We could use a D lineman. We could use almost everything. The only spot we're probably good at is receiver and maybe QB, but Mathis didn't do very well. We could draft a new QB and replace him. I don't know. Okay, I think we'll go with a defensive tackle. Let's go with Kareem Street. He has good ratings, good play rec, good pretty much everything. I wish he had a little more power or finesse. I mean, maybe he does have a finesse, but I doubt it. He would probably be listed as a speed rusher. We could also go with Jaden Kidd, I guess. He doesn't look like a very good run defender, though. He looks like a pure power rusher. Ooh, Storm Calhoun looks insane. Also, that's a really cool name. Again, he might have a power move. I think he does. Okay, wait, hold on. Injury and play rec, or injury and discipline check. He has A injury and good discipline. Okay, we are gonna trade down and we will pick him. Who do we wanna trade down with? God, the trade, I feel like the trade down picks or trade down offers are getting worse and worse by the day. Like <laughs> only a two, a four, and a seven to move halfway down the sec or the first round pretty much. <laughs> a seventh, a seventh round pick to move from 50, to 18. I'm pretty sure the Saints in real life have given up like a first round pick to move up from like 18 to 15 before or something close to that. God, this game sucks. Well, who has about pick 22? That's kind of the range I want to trade back to. The Chargers have 20. That, that might not be bad. Bruh. Okay, here we are trading our first round pick and I guess Spencer Brown because it was unbelievably close to going through, but it didn't. I wish it would just go through if it was that close because like hey, whatever but we're getting the first round pick for the chargers with which is number 20 we're also getting a second this year a third this year and a second next year which isn't like phenomenal value but it's that's pretty good value that's hold on i want to try the uh trade value calculator thing i don't know how accurate that thing is but i want to know what it says about that trade let me see okay that <laughs> that said it wasn't even close so we'll take it said we only gave up 1050 value and they gave up 1760. Uh, get scammed, Chargers. We'll take it. That doesn't feel right to me, though. That feels like, I mean, that's a lot of value for sure. Yeah, that's two second round picks. I, I guess I see why that's almost double value, but I, I don't know. Is our guy? Oh, no, there he is. Okay, I thought he was gone for a second. I was about to cry, but Tory Durham also looks okay. Definitely not as good. Let's go with Storm Calhoun here. Elite speed, great strength. My heart is gonna be shattered when he has normal dev, but I think A power moves, B, awareness, block shed, finesse moves. Not the best pursuit and possibly not the best tackle in the world, 
but who cares, let's take him. Only 22 years old, out of Texas A&M, left-handed, just like me for real, sounds good to me. And he does have hidden dev, 78 speed, 92 strength. This dude seems like a monster. I'm happy with that pick. He might not be the craziest overall, because he isn't a very good run defender, but still, he looks good. Ooh, and another guy I was looking at, Cam Terry is still available. I never checked his speed, though. Ooh, okay. Unless there's somebody else crazy looking, our pick might have to be Cam Terry. We're gonna have a lot of corners, but that's fine. We can maybe move one to safety? I don't know. There is also Austin Stoutmeyer, who's a first-round talent. We do need another off-ball linebacker, so that would, that'll be good if he's still available in the third round. We'll see. He might be. Oh, no, we have another second-round pick. We might just take him there. But yeah, let's go with Cam Terry here. Probably gonna have normal dev. Has bad injury, but shows good discipline, so maybe he won't have normal dev, but he might. He does have elite speed, elite jumping, B-man, B-press, B-zone. I don't know what his play rec and awareness are, but they look maybe decent. I don't know. I don't really care. He's 6'3", 180. There are a lot of these corners that are built like a twig or something, which is interesting, but let's go with Cam Terry out of Michigan, and he does have normal. A lot of the good corners that don't go early in the first or like mid in the first do have normal dev, unfortunately, but I think he's a good overall. We'll see. And here, let's go Austin Stoutmeyer. He's going to be the last pick I show, I think. I am going to take a lot of offensive line after this, though, because we have like zero linemen on the roster, which, you know, might be a problem in real life. But in EA, you know, the lower overall linemen you have, the better. I mean, I put like Dak Prescott at guard or something, and he allowed zero sacks. So I don't know. Or I think it was Dak. It was some QB, which don't ask why. I don't know. Well, I know why I did that. It was the all QB team, but still a weird sentence out of context. Either way, Austin Stoutmeyer, welcome to the Buccaneers. Hidden Dev, obviously a first to second round talent, so somewhere around like a 72 to a 74 probably. I'm happy with that pick, but now I will see y'all for the draft recap. But here is how we did in the draft, and honestly, <laughs> I'm a little disappointed with the first pick, but the rest of these do seem pretty good. Storm Cal Calhoun is only a 74 overall. I was assuming he would have better power moves. It must have been like, it must have been a B because he's the same overall power rusher as he is as a run stopper. So I don't know. I'm just assuming it was probably actually a B and not an A, but he still looks good. I mean, his ratings are good and he should be a good player. So I'm not going to complain, but <laughs> I was going to take not Kareem Street, but he is a higher overall too. I was going to take Eric Posey. Figured he would be a better overall, but I didn't because I thought for sure he would have normal dev, but he has superstar. <laughs> so I just don't know how dev trait works in this game, apparently. Because what? He had, hold on, he had bad injury and bad, bad injury and bad penalty tendency or whatever. I, I don't know, but Kareem Street only had normal dev, so that's not too bad. I would say the guy we got is better, even though he's not a higher overall. It's, it's whatever. You never know. Our guy could have <laughs> superstar dev. Will he? No but he he could, I guess. And then Cam Terry, again, also I wish he had a dev trait, but he's a 75 overall. He's pretty good. Austin Stoutmeyer was a 74 at outside linebacker. Obviously, he's going to play middle linebacker for us, where he is a 73. Still good. And then I took, God, I actually took a lot of picks here. I took every pick except the last pick. Matthew Johnson is a 72 with hidden dev. Kendall Griffin, the tight end, is a 73 with hidden dev. He's the one I said I wanted earlier, but I was able to wait, and he, we did and we did end up getting him and he's good. And then these guys are like, all right, Duncan and Rogers will probably start. So that was definitely a draft. We got like a lot of pretty good players. We just didn't get any like great players, but we still did well. But here's a look at the team heading into year three of the rebuild. We are looking pretty decent now. I mean, <laughs> it's a 74 overall. I don't know how decent you would consider that. But again, all things considered, it's, it's not too bad. Our defense is still only a 73 overall, which, you know, should get better throughout the year. Almost an, our entire defense is pretty young, and hopefully the team can do pretty well this year. I mean, having a decent looking team and performing well are two different things, but we'll see. And once again, I want to see how the rest of the NFL is looking heading into year three, because of course this isn't just about our team. So who is the highest overall team? So it looks like the Patriots and the Chiefs are both a 76, and then the Panthers 
Panthers, I don't know what went wrong with them, and the Giants are both only a 71. It feels like the Panthers have been the worst team every single year. I don't know what went wrong there, but sucks to be them, I guess. So it looks like we're about like a, an above average team, I guess, which, you know, we'll take that. We'll see if that can get us to the playoffs. But based on our preseason, <laughs> having 9.3 points per game, allowing 24. I mean, it's just the preseason, but damn. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll see. So let's get to the midseason point of year three, and we'll see what happens with the NFL this year. Okay, well, at the midseason point of year three, we are four and two. It looks like the Panthers have, you know, gone back to being terrible. Yeah, wait, that's weird. Despite having one of the worst overalls, they've had a pretty good record every year. Huh. All right. That's kind of weird, but it's a certified EA moment. I wonder if we had any dev traits revealed, though. Did we even have any dev traits? I think we had a lineman whose isn't revealed yet. Ooh, Griffin has superstar. Okay, that's huge. I didn't think he would because he only went up two overall so far. And I mean, he's kind of the focal point of the offense. <laughs> But, hey, I don't know. We'll take it. And then Stoutmeyer only has star and Calhoun only has star, unfortunately. But at least we got one superstar. We've been a little unlucky with the dev traits other than, you know, that one superstar. But it is what it is. And we have 27 players to re-sign. I don't even know who's going to be here. Logan Hall, how has he been? He had, well, the first year he did pretty well, six and a half sacks. But, I mean, this year it looks like he's more of a backup, which is kind of weird. Are we not a 3-4? I mean, either way, he should be getting getting more playing time than this. I don't know. That's interesting, but he's not all that expensive. We could just re-sign him, but honestly, I might wait to see if there's anyone like really good in free agency. Honestly, everyone here I'm kind of good on though. I don't feel like paying Mike Jackson that much. Yeah, I mean, there are a few starters, but obviously it's <laughs> it's not going to be super hard to replace them. Have I re-signed like a single player in this rebuild? I don't know, but I think it's just the strategy <laughs> to, to not pay these guys. But in free agency, we definitely definitely will do some stuff. I mean, we might as well. It'll be the last season of the rebuild, so we might as well spend all of our money there. I just want to see what's available before I re-sign these guys. But now, let's get to the end of the year, and we will see how the team finishes in the rest of the league. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number three, and, you know, if you haven't already, uh, y'all know why we're here if you've seen one of my videos before, but if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like and be sure to subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. And if we hit, I think I said a thousand likes, likes on this video, I will do something similar to this with these rosters again, because again, I put a crazy amount of time into these and I want to, I want to get my money's worth with them. I don't know. There's a better phrase to use there, but I want to be able to use them again. So again, a thousand likes and I'll do something else with them and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Again, 25k and we'll do another fun video. I'm just full of fun videos lately, full of stupid shit. I don't know. <laughs> but here is how the team is looking at the end of year number three. And actually we did get another superstar dev. Matthew Johnson had superstar, so that's pretty nice. I don't know why, as an offensive lineman, his dev trait wasn't revealed yet. That's kind of weird, but our tight ends was? I, I don't really understand. Was he, like, rotating with... God, I don't even know. Whatever. But the team's up to a 76 overall now. We're looking pretty good, but if you couldn't already guess, in year number three, we made the playoffs going 15-2. and two. How did we not get a first round bye, though, is my question. Let's check out the NFL standings. So, it looks like the NFC was way stronger than the AFC this year. The Commanders went 16 and 1. All right. We went 15 and 2. The Packers went 14 and 3. The Chiefs were the one seed for the AFC at only 11 and 6. And the worst teams in the league this year were the Bears, Cowboys, the the poor Bears, dude. They haven't even had the worst team, but they have Madden simulation is not very kind to them. But the Vikings were also bad. Seahawks, Eagles, and Panthers were all down there. Interesting. But let's check out our our season stats, Marion Mathis was pretty good. Almost 4,000 yards, which, you know, still isn't as many as I expected, but hey, we'll take it. 36 touchdowns, only 6 interceptions. He was good. Zach Moss, 1,100 yards, 4.1 per carry, 10 touchdowns. Kendall Griffin was our leading receiver as a rookie with 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Marcus Beckham, 1,000 yards, 15 touchdowns. Those two definitely carried. And blocking, other than Julian Duncan, was very good. Damn. And then on defense, Austin Stout, my 
Meyer, as a rookie, led the team with 105 tackles, tackles for loss, 15 for Calhoun, 12 for Diaby, and sacks, 12 and a half for Chandler Jones, 11 for Diaby, 6 for Calhoun as a rookie, 4 for Dennis, and then interceptions, 7 from Cam Terry as a rookie. The rookies really showed out this year. I have no idea who's going to win defensive rookie of the year, but there's a good chance it's one of our players. I mean, it could be Terry, it could be Stoutmeyer, it could be Calhoun. I guess we'll see. But McCollum had three picks, two for Dennis, Jackson, and Merriweather, and then that's it. But a good amount of interceptions. And MVP goes to Jacoby Brissett. He's still the QB for the Commanders. Mathis at number two, unfortunately. But, oh uh, no, he won't even win NFC best QB. Brissett's in the NFC too, so I don't know. Maybe we, maybe he won't win an award. That kind of sucked. But Brett Stanley up there, Josh Dobbs now on the Chargers, Tyler Huntley, Will Levis, Bailey Zappi on the Packers now. Interesting list. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Quentin Johnston, though. That's interesting. I liked him a lot as a prospect, but he definitely hasn't been great as a rookie. <laughs> I didn't necessarily expect him to, but he hasn't been great. Landon Collins wins AFC Defensive Player of the Year. Did we have anyone, any Buccaneers? No. No, this is the AFC. I'm stupid. Chauncey Richard for the Bills wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Defensive for the AFC goes to Ronald Tompkins for the Browns, and then NFC. Offensive Player of the Year goes to Mitchell Tinsley. Marion Mathis at four, Beckham at five, Kendall Griffin at eight, Zach Moss at 10. Quite a few. I mean, this list was almost all commanders and buccaneers. That's interesting. Defensive player of the year goes to Cam Terry. So I think it's safe to say he's going to win defensive rookie of the year. Yaya Diaby at five, Chandler Jones at six. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Isaiah Carter for the Falcons. Kendall Griffin at two. I thought he had that locked up. I'm not going to lie. That kind of sucks. And then defensive rookie of the year obviously goes to Cam Terry. No other Buccaneers were really close. Storm Calhoun at five, and then Stoutmeyer wasn't even up here. That kind of sucks, but it doesn't really matter. So definitely a good season for us in year three. And we have a breakout DB. I'm guessing this is going to be Cam Terry. No, it's Zion McCollum. Never mind. So hold the Cardinals to less than 200 passing yards or get Zion McCollum one of those stats, and he will get a star dev? Or does he already have star? I think that'll give him star. Yeah. And we have a first of many scenario here. We're going to lose this game, and I'm going to be super disappointed, but at least I expect it. Let's go play it cool, though. Y'all know me. And now let's simulate this game against the Cardinals and probably lose because EA. Okay, no, we smoke them, thankfully. 24 to 7. We might have held them to less than 200 passing yards. We'll see. That would be a nice breakout to hit. I mean, we'll have to re-sign him. Hey, he did hit it. Okay, star dev for Zion McCollum. Only 5,000 XP. I thought it would be more, but hey, we'll take it. I thought normally it can... I thought normally it's like 10,000, but it can be 20,000. Maybe it just depends on the position. I don't know. Or maybe how well they do. Maybe he just barely hit it. I have no idea. I should know more about this game, but I don't. <laughs> I just don't. And we have a recap for the first of many. Give us those sweet, juicy staff points, please, and thank you. And we have a playoff rival scenario here because we're going to be taking on the Saints in the divisional. They are 10 and 7. They have the same overall as us. We'll see what happens, though. I don't have a good feeling about it, but I never have a good feeling about the playoff games in this game, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll just have to see what happens. We get an upgrade for Cam Terry, though. He's going to be a monster. What is he ranked for corners? Last time I checked, he was number nine. Now he's number six. Nice. And after the season, he could be the best corner in the NFL because he should get a decent amount of XP. Only one upgrade from a column. That's kind of disappointing, but that's better than nothing, I guess. He's the number 34 ranked corner, so he's a really good number two. But now, without further ado, if we lose this game, I won't be too disappointed because they're also a 76. But let's just see what happens. Oh, we get... Okay, I'm a little disappointed with that. We get smoked 38 to 20. I don't know about that, Madden. We were at home. We did better than them this year, but whatever. This is a certified Madden classic, a certified EA classic. But we, of course, still have one more year, so let's get into the offseason and let's see what kind of dev ups we can get. I'm excited to see. But in the Super Bowl, the Chiefs take down the Falcons 21 to 17. The Falcons are almost becoming the new Cowboys for me. I mean, they're always in the goddamn Super Bowl. I mean, I guess this is their first one here, but it just seems like they win so many Super Bowls, or at least they're in the Super Bowl so many times. In fact, this Super Bowl right here, Chiefs-Falcons, is probably the one I see the most in this game, at least recently. But we have quite a few upgrades for Cam Terry here, so we'll see what his overall is up to. And he could even have Superstar Dev because he won Defensive Player and Defensive Rookie of the Year, and he had seven interceptions. So I'm honestly surprised he doesn't have X-Factor, but hey, I won't complain too much. But yeah, he does have Superstar, the number two ranked 
ranked corner in the NFL. We'll take that. Sean Kemp, that's interesting. But now for the rest of the players, we're gonna have to re-sign. I think maybe it wasn't a good idea to not re-sign Zion McCollum when we could, because now he's pretty expensive. But honestly, he's not interested in the team. We'll offer him very player-friendly, five years, 107 mil. Okay, he does take it. That is an expensive contract. Good Lord. <laughs> but hey, we have a crazy amount of money, a crazy amount of money to work with. So that's fine. That's not too bad. I do want Larry Cook back. He was pretty good. We'll offer him three years, 23 mil, and he doesn't take it. All right, cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> and then Logan Hall, I mean, just didn't play much. He did all right when he did. Well, I guess he played a decent amount. Should we re-sign him? I mean, he's not that expensive. It'd just be two years, 20 and a half mil. All right, we'll do it. He comes back. But everyone else, I mean, Rakeem Jarrett doesn't really get many touches. We could tag Larry Cook, but honestly, I'd rather just re-sign him. So now let's get into free agency and let's see what we can do. Okay, well, in free agency, there's some decent players and we are gonna go for like all of them. We might as well. We have a lot of money. We are gonna go for Desmond King, who we are probably gonna move to safety, Tracy Walker, Calvin Austin, Milton Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin, Eli Ricks, Leonard Floyd, who for some reason only has star dev still he has like two 20 sack seasons and is a 75 fucking overall that's like one of the things i hate most about this game a player can get like 20 sacks twice and be a 75 overall star i does he deserve to get 20 sacks probably not but hey i don't know <laughs> jalen watson we're also going for drake jackson daniel bellinger brian asamoa matt will let's go and the goat the legend the man the myth the legend will clap i don't know if we're gonna get all of these guys like there are some we're only tied for like daniel bellinger but we don't really need another tight end i just wanted to spend the money somewhere <laughs> you know what we could even go with like a good fourth receiver how about how about xavier gibson sure why not so i mean this would be a massive group of players to add to the team i mean i know in real life these guys aren't exactly you know all pros or anything but i mean here they kind of are these are like some of the top players at the position at their position and they're just here in free agency so let's see if we can sign any of these players whoa okay everybody signs except desmond king we get tracy walker calvin austin milton williams xavier xavier gibson jaleel mclaughlin eli ricks leonard floyd jalen watson drake jackson brian asamoa Matt will let's go and will clap. Did we not get anyone? I think we got everybody. Also, Isaac Yadam was a defensive player of the year. Still only a 76 with star, whatever. We didn't get Daniel Bellinger, but who cares? Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to sign Desmond King unless we just overpay the hell out of him. Three years, 69 mil. Good Lord. I mean, nice, but if he didn't take a full level offer from us, he's, he's probably just not interested, <laughs> even though it says he's interested, which is fucking stupid, but whatever. I hate hate how that works too. If it says they're interested and it's like taking every single factor into account, why wouldn't they be interested? It makes no sense. Whatever. Desmond King, do you want to sign with us? Probably not. Okay, he does. We just have to overpay the hell out of him. Cool. We also kind of need a kicker and punter. How about Harrison Butker? And we'll just bring Jake Kamarda back. Cool. So <laughs> we should be looking pretty good. Yeah, we're a 79 overall. Good Lord. That's probably like having a 91 overall in regular free franchise. Oh, I forgot to check the dev ups. We hit a few. Beckham went up to Superstar X Factor. Moss went up to Superstar. Griffin went up to X Factor. And on defense, Diaby went up to Superstar. Pretty good dev ups there. Pretty, pretty good. And unfortunately, God, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. I don't know why. Chandler Jones, unfortunately he retired, but that's why I signed Leonard Floyd and Drake Jackson. <laughs> so we're good there. Assuming these guys actually play well, which I checked their stats and you know, they did. Obviously we know that that Leonard Floyd has done well. But hey, when, I mean, TJ Watt plays well in this game most of the time, but when I sign him, he gets like six sacks a season. So whatever, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. I sound so bitter in this video. I mean, I am, to be fair. I'm sick of this game. I've been playing franchise for fucking seven years now, probably. Back when I watched like Bangle and fucking RBT and all that shit. Like I've been doing this too long, basically. But anyways, let's see what we can do in the draft. I don't even know what we're gonna add. 
maybe O-line, but I mostly trust our offensive line, so I, I don't know. Maybe I don't trust Matt Willetsko fully, because I haven't, you know, seen how he does on this team, so that could be something we draft tackle. But I mean, Trevino did pretty well. Hopefully, Clapp can do well, but yeah, I think O-line is definitely going to be our, our focal point in the draft, unless there's somebody absolutely crazy looking. We'll just have to see. Damn, this is a nice team, which is crazy to say, <laughs> but based off of what we were working with, this is good. But here in the draft, the Bears, of course, have the number one pick. I really wish teams traded, like, picks more, <laughs> because, I mean, I just know what to expect with the top five every year, like, no team ever trades them, but whatever, there, there are much bigger problems with this game <laughs> other than that. But we pick at number 27, and again, really our only thing that we can upgrade big time from this draft is the O-line, and I don't even know how much we can upgrade it. I mean, we can, but, ooh, ooh, Brian Forbes is a top five talent. I think we're going to be taking him. Justin Wharton also looks pretty good. He screams normal dev though. I uh, I don't know. But yeah, I think we're going to go Brian Forbes. I mean, we might as well. That's our big need and we know for sure he's a top five talent. So that's a no brainer. Let's go with Brian Forbes out of Oklahoma. Honestly, I wouldn't ever guess that he's a top five talent. I mean, he has some good ratings, but his pack pass block and his finesse aren't great and he doesn't have like best strength in the world. But hey, I'll, I mean, he's a top five talent, so we'll take him. He might have normal dev. He is F injury and lacks discipline, so I guess we'll see. Okay, I just don't know how dev trait works. Whatever, we'll take it. He doesn't really look like his picture. I mean, that's like the wrong hair color, but hey, fuck it, we ball. He looks pretty good, I guess. And I want to go with the legend Will Clapp, but if we can find a good center, we might as well take a good center, you know what I mean? And I think there is a pretty good one in Dylan Townsend. Not great pass block and not great power, so I guess he's kind of the opposite of the last guy, but he's also not great at pass blocking, so I don't know. He had a very good combine, though. He shows good discipline and has good injury, so that's gonna equal normal dev. I, dog, I don't know how this shit works. Let's go with Dylan Townsend out of Georgia. Hidden dev, 91 strength, good acceleration, good jumping for whatever that's worth. Are we going to be like an 82 overall by the end of the year or something? <laughs> this team's going to be cracked. But we also have one more second round pick. Oh yeah, we got this from trading down. Is there anyone I even want here? I mean, Owen Gates looks solid. He has good strength. Eh, I don't know. There just isn't much we really need to go with here. <laughs> Is there anything on the team I think we can even upgrade at this point or are we good um no we got a tackle and a center and then i like how trevino plays i mean we could go for another tackle just because we might because we literally need nothing else i guess we could go with like a depth safety <laughs> but then again we have like a lot of depth corners so that's not really a need yeah let's go with a tackle again if there's even a good one if not we'll just simulate the rest of this out oh i forgot to check what the number one overall pick was i guess i'll check that after this there aren't even really any draftable linemen left though so I don't know maybe we'll just simulate the rest of this out uh, George O'Sullivan looks okay he'll probably be like a 68 overall though I don't know if we're really looking for that Chris Gresham oh he also doesn't look great never mind I, I guess we're not gonna take a tackle let's go with Alex Flanagan I guess I mean he also doesn't look great but also I don't know about a 6-2 tackle but we'll figure something out there he has okay strength and okay ratings sounds good to me hidden dev only 84 strength, but A. Worst case scenario, he'll be pretty good depth, but he'll probably be like a 70, 71 overall, so we'll take it. But now, let's get to the end of the draft. Okay, well, here is how we did in the draft, and we did pretty well. Um, Brian Forbes is a 77. He looks pretty good. Really good power, good impact block, good awareness for a rookie. Already a top five left tackle as a rookie. Dylan Townsend is a 74. You know, again, kind of the opposite, which is weird, because he has much better strength than the other guy, but he is a lot better finesse and not very good of power. I hate how that works still, but whatever. And then I was right about Alex Flanagan. He was a 70 at center. I moved him to tackle and he's a 71. Again, I don't know how I feel about a 6-2 tackle, but you know what? Who cares? This isn't a realistic rebuild. We'll do it. And then the CPU picked a pretty good corner. Sean Flynn, 72 overall. He's not bad. And it did take Owen Gates for me. He is only a 66, but he has hidden dev at least. And then the CPU also picked a decent running back, another decent corner. We we have too many corners now. I guess we'll move one to safety. Ooh, Brian Hearns has 95 speed and hidden dev though, so that's kind of nice. I don't know if he'll make a great safety though with 63 tackles, 62 hit power, 55 strength, but you never know. I think we'll be moving someone else to safety though. And the number one pick was Brian May, a 
79 overall QB. Already the number six ranked QB. What's his dev trait? Probably pretty good, right? No, star. Okay, but I guess better than normal. <laughs> there was also a pretty good QB to the Eagles, Bob Mills. It sounds like somebody's dad's name. He also has star. All right, fair enough. So we once again did pretty well, all things considered. And let's get into the fourth and final year of this experiment, if you want to call it that. But here's a look at the team heading into the fourth and final year of the rebuild. We are looking good at an 80 overall. I guess our center and right tackle must be twins. I don't know. They have the same face, but or are they different? They look like slightly different. That's weird, but like almost identical. That's interesting. But yeah, I mean, we're looking really good. 80 overall offense and then 80 overall defense. Obviously, we went crazy in free agency. We had a really good draft too. Not that we needed a good draft, but we did add a lot to the O-line. So this is going to be the most disappointing eight and nine season of all time. I cannot wait. But let's check out the rest of the league one last time. Of course, we will see who the best and worst teams in the NFL are. I'm guessing we have the best roster by a few overall, probably. I saw the Patriots and the Eagles have a 77 and the Chiefs, I'm guessing. Oh, the Chiefs are tied with us at an 80. Okay, they're doing well. We're also an 80 though. So we're not even like technically the best team in the NFL. We are only tied for it. But who is the worst? The Saints and the Rams are a 74. The Panthers are still a 73. I don't know what they're doing. Same with the Giants. So the Panthers and Giants are still the two worst teams. I don't I don't know what's going wrong there. But now let's let's just get straight to the end of the season and we will see what happens. And in year number four of the rebuild, we finish 13 and four, once again, doing very well. But let's see how the rest of the league did. The best team was the Jaguars at 14 and three. 49ers also went 13 and four. We went 13 and four, of course. The Patriots did really well at 12 and five. And the Packers were the worst team at three and 14. The Titans and Seahawks both went five and 12, which is, you know, about how the Seahawks are playing on offense recently. Shane Waldron, I know there are worse offensive coordinators like Matt Canada, but... <laughs> Holy shit, Shane Waldron has been awful this year. <laughs> At least recently. It's been a it's been an interesting time as a Seahawks fan seeing the defense do amazing and the offense really struggle. It's been like the opposite story of the last few years. I don't know. But anyways, let's check out our season stats. Marion Mathis with 4100 yards, 38 touchdowns, 8 picks. He did very well. Definitely his best season so far. Zach Moss was like all right. 1000 yards, only 3.9 yards per carry though, 9 touchdowns receiving Marcus Beckham 1350 yards and 18 touchdowns he was a monster thousand yards 12 touchdowns for Griffin not much outside of those two but oh well and blocking was okay our tackles weren't great but I've seen much much worse to be fair Dennis led the team with 112 tackles tackles for loss 18 for Calhoun 12 for Diaby and sacks 10 and a half for Floyd 9 for Calhoun and Diaby 8 and a half for Williams really good amount there and then interceptions definitely definitely weren't great. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was, I guess, nine. I don't know where that'll rank in the league, but four for Terry, two for King and Walker, one for Watson. And MVP does go to Marion Mathis. We will definitely take that. Tyler Huntley now on the 49ers up there. That's interesting. This is really the first time I've seen Trey Lance though. I mean, we might have year one actually, but he was really good in the only QBs retired one of these I did, but he's finally doing well here. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Zeke. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Dan Henley. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jamie Kendricks on the Ravens. And Defensive Rookie, or yeah, Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kyle Kramer for the Dolphins. And then NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Marcus Beckham. So we get Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year. Mathis at three, Griffin at six. And Defensive Player of the Year goes to Austin Tate for the Bears. He's been really good. Storm Calhoun at seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Rasheem Golston for the Commanders. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Carlos Simon for the Cowboys. So we will definitely take Offensive Player of the Year and MVP. Let's check out some stats for the rest of the NFL though. Obviously Mathis had the most passing touchdowns. It looks like Hutchins did really well. Ritter did really well. Huntley did well. Had a good passer rating but threw a lot of picks. Zach Wilson was eh, he was okay. Emmanuel Childress for the Steelers did pretty well. Only normal dev but up to an 80 overall he looks pretty good. Zeke and Kareem Hunt have been the two dominant running backs and it hasn't 
hasn't changed. I really hate how that happens, but, well, not with those two, but it's hard for rookie running backs to do well. It looks like there is one, though. Adam Quincy, almost 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, only four yards per carry, though. At least there's somebody, though. <laughs> Torrey Tyson, what a name for the Saints. Almost 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns. He was really good. And sacks, was it Josh Uche, actually, who led the league in sacks? Yeah, he led the league with 17. I think he is the highest overall player here, now up to a 91 with X Factor. He's become a really good player. And then for interceptions, it looks like a lot of players had five. So we have thankfully seen a good amount of rookies come into the league, but a lot of the stats are still kind of dominated by like real players, which is weird, but I don't know. Again, that's that's Madden for you. That's EA. But we are going to be taking on the Rams in the wild card here. There is 77 to our now 82, I think. Yeah, 82 overall. So we are better for sure, but overall doesn't matter in this game. So <laughs> we'll see what happens, but let's see if we can take down Stetson Bennett and the Rams. And we do, 24 to 9. Was that the score of like our last wild card game? Or no, I think that was 24 to 7, but close enough. We have some upgrades though. Kendall Griffin, Brenton Knight, big upgrades here. I mean, three starters on offense, we'll take it. And now we are going to be taking on the 11 and 6, 75 overall Arizona Cardinals. Why are they here? <laughs> that has to be like probably tied for the lowest overall now. Yeah, even the Panthers have a 76. Oh, it is lagging. The Giants have a 75. So yeah, this is tied for the worst roster in the league, which I don't know how. They have a good looking tight end. I know Gordon Sims is a really high overall. Josh Starks must be pretty high with Superstar Dev, but they still suck for some reason. It seems like teams overalls change when you're going up against the team. So maybe they're not quite the worst. Like maybe if the Giants were here, they would switch to a 73, which is so weird. I have no idea why that happens, but it does. I've seen it happen before. So maybe they're actually like a 77 if they were like going up against other teams. I don't know. It's weird, but God, I, I feel like we're going to lose this game, but let's see what happens against the Cardinals, another NFC West team. Okay. No, we, we destroy them, which is valid. We beat them 28 to nothing. We shut them out and blow them out like your mother does to me. Couple upgrades there though. So we'll take that. But now we're going to be taking on the 49ers here at a 79, apparently. They have a really good receiver in Darren Roten. Rotten. I don't know how you say that. The number two ranked receiver in the league. X Factor, only 24 years old. Tyler Huntley's playing up to an 85 overall, which is kind of crazy to see. That's kind of the fun part of this, seeing these backups turn into like actual studs. I mean, I know Tyler Huntley's a pro bowler somehow, but he didn't really get that for playing super great. He got that because the NFC or the AFC ran out of QBs, literally. <laughs> they also have Geno Stone. This is just the Ravens. I guess it's only those two, but still. But now let's simulate this game against the 49ers and we will see if we can somehow get a win. If we lose it, I won't be too mad, even though we do have a better team, but still. Okay, we destroy them. How do we destroy the 49ers worse than any of the teams we've faced? I mean, they're four overall better than the Cardinals were. They are, I think, three overall better than the Rams were. I don't know. That's weird. But we did face the entire NFC. West there. And we are going to be taking on the Texans in the Super Bowl. The Texans of all teams. At a 79 overall at 10 and 7, that is, that's something. But we have three upgrades here for Marion Mathis for winning MVP. Should be an X Factor, but it doesn't look like he got it. It looks like he at least got Superstar because he had an ability slot there. So yeah, he does get Superstar Dev. We will take that. I mean, it doesn't matter because this is the last year, but he is the best ranked QB in the NFL now. He's looking good. Beckham gets, an, uh, gets a couple upgrade points for winning offensive player of the year. Is he the best receiver now? He's an 89, still number two. So there's, who's the number one receiver in the league? Hold on. I guess we might as well go over like all of these. So Mathis is obviously the best playing up to a 95 with morale, but Stanley's also up there. Little's also up there. Greg Hutchins for the Jags. The best real QB is Stetson Bennett. That's interesting. Best running back is Brees Hall. Devin Singletary also up there. Tyler Algier, Antonio Gibson. Best receiver because of morale is Beckham right now, but it looks like Carl Gaines for the Steelers is a 90 overall, wearing number 86. That's interesting. The best tight end is Kendall Griffin by a decent amount. Yeah, tight ends are hard to develop in this game, even if you juice the sliders, which maybe I should do them more. Best left tackles, Tyler Howard for the Jags. Best left guard is Elton Harrington. I think I was thinking about taking him at one point, but Knight's at number two and Forbes was at number two for left tackle. Joe Tipman, Ricky Allen for the Patriots, and Jason Williams are all the best centers, I guess. But I guess Tittman's the best because he's not playing with any morale. But Dylan Townsend's up there. Matthew Johnson.
Johnson is the best right guard. There are a couple good right tackles up there. Aaron Johnson, we've seen him, is the best left end for the Bills. Best right end is Gordon Sims for the Cardinals, yet somehow they're still a terrible overall. Best defensive tackle is Braylon Crowder for the Saints. Jordan Davis at number two up there. I see Eric Posey up there. <laughs> but hey, our guy isn't too far behind, so I'm, I'm not too upset about that. Where is our guy? Oh, I guess Calhoun's even ranked higher than him right now, and he's up to superstar dev, so hey, maybe Posey would have been a better pick, but Calhoun's better, so we'll take it. And then Josh Uche is by far the best left outside linebacker. Dan Henley is the best middle linebacker. There are a few decent right outside linebackers. Cam Terry is the best corner by a decent amount. There aren't that good of safeties, though. We do have one of the best in Tracy Walker, and the best strong safety is Ernest Sheldon for the Chiefs at an 86. Desmond King also up. So we basically have, like, one of the top players, if not the top player for almost every position. <laughs> I just wanted to go through all those to see how the NFL has changed up. But now, let's get into the Super Bowl here, and we will see if we can win the Buccaneers a ring over the Texans. But here we go in the Super Bowl against the Texans. What an interesting Super Bowl. <laughs> but now, let's simulate this game out, if I can pause it, there we go, and let's see if we can get a win. No score so far through the first quarter. We score first, though, in the second quarter, making it 7 to nothing. The Texans get a safety and a touchdown to make it 9 to 7. We score to make it 14 to 9, though. What a weird score. They get a touchdown and miss the extra point. What is this game? We get a touchdown to make it 17 15, and that's going to be the final score. We win. What a weird Super Bowl. A safety, a touchdown, and I'm guessing a missed two point conversion because they wanted to make it 17, which it is very good they didn't get that, or else it would have been tied and probably would have went to overtime. But we do get a win here, and what a way to close out this rebuild. As we have definitely built the best roster in the NFL, and we cemented that by winning a Super Bowl. But of course, that is the end of today's video. I really hope y'all enjoyed because I definitely did. This was one of the most interesting rebuilds I've ever done. Maybe the most interesting. It's definitely, I guess, the most different from the actual NFL. But again, if y'all enjoyed, be sure to drop a like. It really does help out the channel. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more crazy stuff like this. But thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I'll see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.